hour. The old 100 mile an hour limit. And look at that start for Courtney. Everyone on soft tyre got a great jump, but James Courtney in particular, around the outside of everybody. Jamie Winkup, great start also. Save with Van Gisberg and a Percat. Initially, I thought it was actually going to be Fabian that could go on, but the secondary part of his start didn't work out nearly as well. This is on board. Here we go. I was just looking for who actually balked then on the way into the left-hander. I think this is Mark Winterbottom. And we go all the way down the bottom of the hill here. So he comes through turn one. This is super fast. Then the braking area. So around the outside we go. And off, off goes Mostert. We think we're on board with Rick Kelly. Sorry. And he's come out of turn one. Out of the turn two. And you see the two cars, they hooked up hard together. And you can see the two cars there, Pye and Dave Reynolds, firing off the road. You don't think you're going that fast there because it's one of the slower sections of this track. Mostert just completely outbraked himself down there on cold tyres and cold brakes and then paid a big penalty. Yeah, for sure. We were on board then with Rick Kelly because that was the car on your far right, three abreast. And then just have a look here, those two cars disappearing. We'll get a really good view of this now. So he gets a bump by Winterbottom. That was actually Winterbottom that bumped Reynolds, wow. who then bumped Pi. Pi had nowhere to go. Yep. Absolutely no grip out there. Remember the rain we had yesterday? That is drenched. Watch so check this again. Yep, for sure. That was Mark Winterbottom into the back of Dave Reynolds, who then escorted Ooh. Scott Pi wide, both cars in. And we need to point out that uh, they are from the same garage. The David Reynolds Botlow car is operated by Ford Performance Racing, owned by Rod Nash. So that'll put a bit of tension and stress in that garage. Yeah, you bet, Neil, just with Dave now. And that was a heavy hit. First thing, you're OK? Uh, yeah, I'm not too bad. I just wish they put a um, tyre barrier where the concrete fence was. It's turned it into a Volvo. It's flattened it off a little bit. Uh, what happened? Uh, I don't know. I was going around turn three. I turned in, got a bit loose. Then someone spun me, someone turned me around and I was off the track and then in the fence. I had a very, very tough weekend this one's been. Uh, yeah, I seem to, I can't get past that turn three. It's been a bugger for me all weekend. Go, 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 go. Oh, go rest up. We'll see you for the Endurance Cup. Thanks, man. He has had a shocking weekend, Dave Reynolds. He's been fast. In fact, he's been the fastest often of all the Ford guys in terms of his qualifying performance and the outright speed. He said to me earlier today that he thought that wet race yesterday was as wild. He said he was scared to do anything, scared yeah. to touch the brakes, scared to turn the wheel. It was so slippery. And, and he couldn't see. Yeah, that was the big issue. <laughs> he could not see. So McLaughlin has emerged in control of this field. I'll get an update for you on who's on what tyres. It's McLaughlin, Courtney, Percat, Stephen Johnson left. His dad, Dick Johnson, on the right. Stephen's been giving us a hand in the broadcast box here this weekend. Touring car champion and Bathurst winner Dick Johnson. They will not want to consider the implications of the cost of a car going into that concrete wall. And here's the reason why. Turn three. So Mark Winterbottom gets into the right rear corner of David Reynolds, who then basically ricochets across and grabs the Dick Johnson racing entry. Bang. Just had nowhere to go now. There was just nothing he could do about that.